Hello everyone, today I'm very excited to show you how I created this short animation in Blender. I think it looks pretty cool and it was fun and fairly easy to create. So first, let's talk about this soldier. Oh my god, guys, seriously, I think this is one of the best looking assets i ever seen in my life. This guy is coming from a pack, the Special Ops pack, created by the big medium small team. I will put the link in the description. And just to be clear, I'm not paid to talk about those assets. This is my honest opinion. I genuinely think those assets are simply gorgeous. I mean, look at those details, the quality of the materials is just crazy good. And in this pack, you get more than 100 items guns, props, three different soldiers that you can equip however you want. The soldiers have their own rigs, but the creators also prepared a model that we can use in Mixamo. You can easily color tune the soldiers, and on top of that, the pack works with the asset browsers in Blender. I think you get it, this is a pretty damn good project. If you're interested, once again, the link will be in the description, and you can get 40% off if you use the code BFRIDAY. Okay, so I did choose a soldier, and I prepared it with the look that I wanted, then you can put the guy in A pose and import it in Mixamo with the side tool. And boom, you get your sexy soldier inside Mixamo. Then I selected a walk animation that could work for my project. I ended up selecting this one, but I did slow it down a lot to fit the mood of the scene. I exported everything in Blender, texture it back, and that's it, we have our main animation. Now let's switch to Houdini for the mud and liquid simulation. All you have to do is to export your animation in Alembic and import it in Houdini with this node. Now in Houdini for the simulation, there are many options. I decided of course to go with the MPM solver, not only because it's easy and the results are super realistic, but also because this is the only thing I know how to use in Houdini. I did a video to explain how the MPM solver works. I will put the link in the description. As a reminder, the MPM solver Solver needs three inputs, the source, this is the main simulation, like mud, water, metal, sand, the things you want to simulate. Two, the collider, the objects you want your simulation to collide with. And three, the container, to set the resolution of your simulation and to define whether you want a domain or not. For the source, I wanted three different sources, the mud, the liquid mud, and the water. Then I remembered that the Houdini team created the perfect example I could copy for this project. I will also put that link in the description. And because we are in Houdini, it's very easy to copy setups. So to gain some time, I took their nodes and just pasted them into my project. And yes, the Houdini team do share their files when they create a tutorial. So we have this box that we transform into mud, this one for the liquid mud, and this one for the water. So all together we have something like that. And that's it for the source, now for the collider. Of course, I use our soldier, but because I wanted him to sink a bit in the mud, I changed the animation with this transform node and those keyframes. Here you can see that he's going down. Later, I realized doing that in Houdini was a terrible idea, but we'll talk about that in a few seconds. For the collider, you define animated deforming because our soldier is deforming when walking, and that's it for the collider. Now for the domain, I wanted the simulation to happen only within those boxes, but it's not mandatory, so you just import the three boxes I showed you before, you merge them, and you plug that in the container. At the end, you'll get this big box, boundaries to close so we're sure that the simulation will not go outside and it will bounce on the walls of our domain. For the resolution of the simulation, we go for 0.0034. Now it's calculation time, we have around 33 million grains to simulate. On my machine, if I recall correctly, it took around 4 hours for 150 frames. Let's go for a test. Wow, that's really good. We can see the different materials mixing with each other. We put everything in cache. And before we export those beauties to Blender, let's talk about meshing. If you check the simulation at the moment, it's only grains. So for a sand simulation, maybe it's already good. But for mud and water, this is not really what we're looking for. So we need to transform those grains into mesh that will suit our need. So for example, let's do this process for the mud. Therefore, we isolate the mud. We transform the grains to volume, then a reshape and a smooth, a reshape again, 
and we convert everything back to polygons. It will be much easier to texture that in Blender if you have polygons instead of volumes. And voila, we have a beautiful mesh for our mud, which doesn't look like grains anymore. And if you're asking me how the heck do I know this workflow, I'm just copying the setup of the Houdini team. So we do the same for the liquid mud, and for the water, it's much simpler. We just need one node for the mesh before the conversion to polygons. Then we export everything to Blender using Alembics, one export for each material. Now, let's clarify a point. This ROP Alembic node is only available in Houdini Indie version, so the paid version. Unfortunately, the apprentice version, the free version of Houdini, doesn't have this node. So if you don't have the Indie version, you need to do everything in Houdini itself. Now, let's continue in Blender. I did import the different meshes we've created. Now we can apply some texture to each one of them. For the mud, I did use a mud material from the procedural material pack from Ryan King. I mean, check the quality, it's all procedural, and the look of this material is just spectacular. The link to this pack will be in the description. For the water, I created this simple material with a brown color, a high transmission because it's water, and a very low roughness. For the liquid mud, I did use this Cosan 05 material that you can find for free on polyheaven.com. And that's it, but before we continue, let's see why it was a terrible idea to change the animation in Houdini. As a reminder, here is the animation in Houdini. We can clearly see the guy is going down because I wanted that. And we did all the simulations with this animation. And now this is our original animation in Blender. Yep, the guy is not going down. So we know for sure that our simulation that we spent hours calculating will not match our soldier animation in Blender. Yeah! So I did open my praying book and hope that Blender and Houdini use the same units. In Houdini, we have a keyframe at frame 11 with a zero on the Z axis. I think it's not Z in Houdini, but why? But we don't care, we are Blender users, we call Z whatever we want, so we do the same in Blender. And then we have minus 04 at frame 150, so once again, let's do the same in Blender. Now to compare, I will export the Blender result in Alembic and import it into Houdini. Let's test the final frame. So this is our modified animation coming from Blender, and this is the animation we modified in Houdini. Wow, we are lucky, it's matching. Let's test the frame 100 for example. And yes, it's matching too. Yeah, we did it. The animation is matching. Now we can go back to creating our environment. Okay, back in Blender, first I added some plants from the Botanic add-on. Then I created my camera animation. For the ground, I scattered more plants on a plane and I just duplicated this plane a bunch of time. Then I added those rocks from the Megascans library. As a reminder, the Megascans assets are free until the end of the year. You can check my video about that in the description. I duplicated those rocks a bunch of time as well, and if I display my simulation, you can see that I tried to cover the borders with the rocks so it looks more organic. Then I added the trees, a lot of them, until I was satisfied with the look. For the light, first I added a HDRI from the Scene Skies HDRI, as usual. The scene was too dark for my taste, and I knew that at a point I would add some fog, so I decided to add a sun to bring more light to the project. And just like that, the image was more interesting and with a lot of contrast. So once again, this is without the sun and with the sun. From there, I added a bit of fog, and you can decide the look you prefer. Lot of fog with god rays, thanks to the sun, or less fog, it's really up to you. Personally, I decided for the city of 0.008. We are losing the god rays, but we can better appreciate the simulation. When I was happy with the setup and everything, I duplicated this file for another camera angle. I like to duplicate files because I can always move stuff around according to the need of the framing. For example, for this shot, I moved the plants manually to have some interesting elements in the foreground and in the background. And that's it, I did render 5 different shots. It took around 1 minute per frame. In DaVinci Resolve, I added the glow, the color grading, I added some sounds and music, and voila! Don't hesitate if you have questions, I hope you like this project, I talk to you soon, bye bye!